things which come to your mind when I tell you Mercedes-Benz. Elegant, classy, perhaps a little bit old-fashioned. In the end we've got this bright creature. Creatures. I mean it's perhaps all right for a low-sitting sports car but oh no we've got an estate. Well a shooting back a little bit sexy but still has person specking this car been under influence of some mind-altering substances. What is the deal with this car? What is going on? Well, come with me and we're going to find out. Okay, let's see how quick we are. So, spot mode on. Shall we switch off the nanny in the form of electronic stability control? Let's switch it off, all right. Foot on the brake, foot on the throttle. Come on, Mercedes. Oh, <laughs> I see front tires are rock and rolling. The declared 0 to 100 is 6.9 seconds and I am, oh, despite off to a bad start, I am 6.8, not bad. The top speed is 235 kilometers an hour. <laughs> My magic box from Rice Logic, I like it. Look at this long yellow bonnet. Are things as bright on the inside as they are on the outside? Let's find out. So, we've got a 1.3 litre turbocharged petrol engine combined with electric motor. This is a plug-in hybrid and the total power that is being produced is 218 horses and 450 newton meters of torque. There are bits of yellow. It is pretty bright and that is enough about the numbers under the bonnet. So, a small disclaimer before we begin, the CLA is actually one of my favorite cars out of all cars. It is also one of those cars where I can't quite decide which version I like better, the shooting brake or the saloon. They're both absolutely stunning. I've got the very same problem with Porsche Panamera. So because I like the CLA, I have filmed a couple of CLA models already. A while ago I have filmed the CLA 43S shooting brake, the AMG. I'll put the link to the video somewhere on the screen. Have a look, there's some feisty and frisky stuff happening. But how does this car feel to drive? Well, overall, it is very comfy, very peachy. The suspension absorbs most of the bumps, potholes, imperfections. The speed bumps are not your concern at all. As you trot around town on electric only, the car is very quiet, very relaxing. It's easy to maneuver in and out of car parks. We've got a good turning circle. The visibility is also good. You've got no blind spot in the front. Big rear window. Sure, in an SUV, you'll be sitting slightly higher up, seeing a little bit more. But let me tell you, for some, that is still not enough. And they'll still crush it. So you just have to pay attention. You've got the 360 degrees cameras, which are absolutely brilliant. The steering here is nice and light a natural feel about it but also a very solid response this is a front-wheel drive car so easy to drive and very chilled and as you hop on the motorway even when you pick up quite a bit of speed there's pretty much no tire nose no wind nose this is such a lovely and brilliant long distance cruiser just like most Mercs are this one however is also cheap to run I am still averaging, well, bugger all, seven liters. And this is only the combustion engine because I have not charged my battery for several hundred kilometers. Combination of city, congested city, B roads, motorway. And as you know, <laughs> let's be honest, my right foot is not exactly what you can call a piece of feather. We've got an eight speed automatic transmission. So plenty of opportunities to ponder, wonder, and essentially cock it up. Fortunately, she's a quick thinker, smooth operator, and you just cannot feel the change of gears at all. And what about being a passenger? So I have adjusted both front seats for my height, which is just over 1.7 meters, five foot seven. I've got very good legroom, very good headroom. What about the middle seat? Well, the space here is all right, but you do have a big hump here on the floor, so I'm not quite sure what to do with my feet. But anyway, there's plenty of space for two adults and a small child, but it just shows you this combined with such a big boot. This is a brilliant alternative to an SUV. OK, 
Okay, let's check the boot space. We have 505 liters of space. The shape of the boot is very practical. You can easily fit in long items as well. And if this is not enough to carry all your clutter, you can of course fold the back seats down. And that is enough about the boot. Let's check the throttle response. I'm in a comfort mode, I'm gonna floor it. A bit of rattle but actually it's pretty salubrious i have to say but because we have flyers and high achievers let's do better let's put this guy into sport mode and let's floor it <laughs> on a curvy road come on mac actually i have to say it is much punchier in the sport mode the steering is sharper the suspension stiffens it's nice the handling is surprisingly superb because it's not a small car, it is also slippery, it is wet. It's a front wheel drive car, it's a perfect environment to wrap your teeth around the very next tree. But this car, wow, lovely, absolutely lovely actually, I like it. <laughs> and how much does this pleasure going to cost you? Well, in the UK, just over 40,000 pounds, which actually I think is pretty okay. Well, well, Mercedes, we meet again. And every time it just gets better and better. In my opinion, Mercedes built one of the most beautiful and best cabins in business. I mean, look at this place. It is absolutely stunning. I love driving this car at night. With ambient light, you can change the coloring. It feels very luxurious, very relaxing. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about the batteries. So we've got 15 kilowatt hours batteries and the declared maximum electric range is 76 kilometers. You probably can get quite close to it driving through a congested city, springtime, early autumn when you're not having air conditioning blowing too hard. But the average you're gonna get is probably about 60 kilometers, which is still pretty good. What else is good is the charging process. You can charge it using the wall box at home 7.4 kilowatt hours and it will take you only one hour and 45 minutes there are plenty of hybrid cars which it takes 10 hours to charge the battery this is actually very very good right on to the cabin so the quality of the materials the fit and finish well it's inside this quality and style i absolutely love it although personally i would probably select brown interior brown with yellow it just works beautifully i love these seats actually they're very comfortable but when you are going on a curvy road you know they hold your body where they're supposed to hold your body we also have seat comfort i'm going to turn it on seat kinetics it'll put me at ease and we want to have a woman at ease don't we let's jump straight into practicality so large bowl of water tips you can easily fit that in the door bin you've got more space down here as well lovely you can pop that bottle in here as well perfect big pocket very organized very germanic i like it two usb-c ports lovely here you've got a 12 volt socket another usb-c port wireless mobile charge you've got a mobile phone on the ankle so you can still see it probably shouldn't be looking at it but anyway you can see it you can close that pocket if you have secrets and you don't want other people looking at it I mean, don't we all have those secrets i like the steering wheel it's lovely We've got plenty of controls here it's a bit of a touch slide um it you know you start to think initially about oh, god almighty it's a bit of a mumbo jumbo but no no it takes short moment and you're going to get your head around it it's actually really functional i like it got the paddle shifters here so you can control the recuperation process when you're driving on electric only i just leave it in automatic and it does a brilliant job but if you want to have you know save a bit of battery you can use that and it's it's quite helpful mercedes-benz style gear levers like in america i like it just that you know when i hop to another car next week <laughs> i'm going to be cleaning my windows most likely in a car park and people will be looking at oh look at that blonde bimbo <laughs> Do I care? No, not really. Okay, you've got this beautiful screen here. This is the MBUX system. So digital driver's display, of course. You can change the layout and oh, let me tell you, the sky is just the limit. It's just beautiful. I mean, I love that trip, navigation, telephone assistance. Okay, perfect. You can also control this part of the screen on the steering, which is brilliant. So this side serves this side and this side serves this side. Very, very clever, isn't it? You can operate, of course, the system using your finger because this is the touch screen and the system MBUX 
together with iDrive from a BMW are by far the best infotainment systems available on the market. It's quick, it is intuitive, it's just brilliant. Let's have a look at navigation, for example, right? Look how quick it is yeah, and how crisp, sharp and crystal clear the map is. I mean, it's just absolutely lovely. You can plug in your iPhone, your Android, but why would you do that? I wouldn't do that. It will ruin it. It's just lovely. God almighty, I can't. You can, of course, change the themes, right? Trip electric experience. Let's have a look. Standard. No, we don't want to be standard. Who wants to be standard? Let's have a look at trip. So it changes the look here and the look here. Lovely. You can also operate the system using the pad down here, which I tend to use more often. You even have the wrist support here. You can rest your wrist on it. I mean, you don't have a, do you know, with the computer mouse, you, that's not healthy. So you don't have support, right? I mean, Mercedes-Benz thought of everything. And actually using the pad down here is far less distracting. Whilst you're driving, you've got the shortcut buttons here as well. Navigation, map, radio, media, telephone. You've got traditional knob for volume control. As we know, some brands got carried away this slightly and they've taken it all away, replaced it with sliders. Nobody likes that. Change of driving modes here. Speaking of practical buttons, we also have climate controls here. So shortcut buttons for everything. Traditional knob for uh, temperature. I like that. Everything, just every button serves its purpose. I mean, Mercedes, you've done blimmin' really well. You see, the car on the outside is a bit crazy, still classy, but on the inside, it's bold and it's beautiful. Closing in, closing in. You see, the CLA in this crazy yellow is a little bit like a beautiful, classy and elegant woman who's got a similar style every day when it comes to her clothes, hair, makeup. Some call it consistent, others call it boring. And then comes a day when this woman decides to be a little bit bolder, wears something brighter, colors her hair red. And you know why? Because she can. And what else? She won't look ridiculous. And you know why? because she's got a strong, solid canvas to paint on. And then you have these crazy women who one day decide to color their hair pink and they think they're gonna look so gorgeous and they forget about the rest, the canvas that is. But you know who hasn't forgotten about the rest? Mercedes. Years of research and development, years of effort to see what works. And whoever was specking this car shows you just what you can do, how you can make this car work for you, however you want it. You can be bold and you can be beautiful. And once again, Mercedes is a living example that you can be both classy and very cool. I'm curious to hear how you would spec your CLA. So please do let me know in the comments below. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a heavenly day and I shall see you all very, very soon. Bye.